Welcome. I would like to go over the steps for how to create a logo design. The very first uh, step is I want you to go through the questions for the powerful logo designs. This is important. I want you to see some great examples and also give you some ideas of what creates a powerful design. If you see a design in here that you like that you might want to try to copy, then that's a great start starting point. But I do want you to make your own original design, answer the questions so that you think about it. And then I want you to go to the project, the powerful, uh, I'm sorry, the project for the logo design. We're going to use this web page, pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R.com, which is a photo site I use a lot for my photography courses, but it's similar to Photoshop, so you can create um, images, your own original graphics in pixlr.com. Just like you would in Photoshop, we will use the advanced version, so make sure you select advanced when you get to this page. I'm going to click on advanced. Then I'm going to create a new image. In this box, it's important that you first of all select transparent because we don't want a background for our logo. You can title it logo design or your name or whatever you will help you find it. And then I want you to reduce the size so it's a little smaller. Let's go to about 280. For width and height, we're going to make a square so they should match. That's good. I'm going to select OK. So now I have my canvas. This is a blank canvas. Whenever you see that checkerboard pattern, that means that you have no background. If it was plain white, it would have a plain white background. All right. To start, I'm going to select a shape. Depending on what logo design you want to create, we're going to use shapes and text. We are going to start with a shape. My, on my toolbar, I'm going to select the shapes, which is this button right here. When I select this, up on the top toolbar, I get all these options popping up of which shape I might want. I'm going to choose circle. I'm going to leave the opacity at 100. What opacity means is how see-through your shape or object will be. Um, opacity of 100 means it's not see-through at all. If I lower that, it'll be a little bit transparent. You might want to play with this in your logo design. I'm going to leave mine all at 100% opaque. I'm going to leave this at normal, the mode, which gives different effects. And the border si size, I don't want a border at all. A border would create a little black line or colored line around your object. I'm not going to have any. And then lastly, I'm going to choose my color for my shape. The default setting is black but I want a different color. So when I click that black square, what I get is the color picker, color selector box. I would like to choose red. So I'm copying a logo I found. I'm starting with this red, which is going to show up in this bottom area here. The default is black. This is the color you're choosing. If it looks good to you, push OK. And now I have a red circle I'm ready to draw. So I'm going to come into my um, blank area. I'm going to draw my red circle. Okay. If it isn't um, exactly the way that you want it or where you want it, you can move it or you can redo it. If you want to redo, you can go to Edit, Undo, and Redraw it. To move it, you go to the Move tool, which is the top right tool. It says Move tool, and I can move it around. I like it right in the middle. Okay. One thing I can do is play with uh, the effects on this layer if I choose to, and I'm going to show you how to do that with my each, each shape or the text that you put on here. You can create effects if you choose to. I'm going to go over here to my Layers window. I only have one layer right now, so that's what's showing up. And then I can um, play with this layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this uh, tool right here, which is Layer Styles. It's the one that looks like it has a little star in the corner of a square layer styles. I'm going to select that. I get an option box that pops up for layer styles. And I, um, you can play with these different styles of shadows. I'm going to show you a drop shadow. When I select that, you can see immediately it gives me a little drop shadow. If I click on the name dro drop shadow again, highlight it, then I get these options. The opacity again is how see-through the shadow is. If you watch, if I lower that, it becomes less and less obvious. I might want to make it a little more subtle. And then I can play with the distance, how long the shadow goes, and also the size and the angle. If I move this, it moves the shadow around. But I'm going to have it like this. And you can change the color of your shadow also. Or you can decide not to have a shadow at all. So if you like it, push OK. If not, you can push Cancel. I'm going to go with no shadow. 
after showing you all that. Okay, so I'm going to keep building my logo. Every time I want to put a new shape or anything um, additional, I'm going to go to add a new layer. So I'm going to go to my layer menu, which is right here. Select new layer, which is the first option. As soon as I select new layer, it's going to show me I'm going to pop over to my layers window. And I see my new layer popped up. This is the one that's selected. It's in blue. It's my blank layer. The bottom layer, if I want to select that and move objects around, I can select that and move the red circle. I'm going to go back to my blank layer. I'm going to create another shape this time. I'm going to go back to Shape Tool. This time I'm going to uh, do another circle. I'm going to leave all my settings the same. All I'm going to do is change the color. I'm going to do a white circle. So I'm going to choose this white. Select OK. I'm on my new layer. So now I can make another white shape, a uh, white circle. Now I don't like where that's at, but you can see my two different um, shapes are in different layers. So I want to move this. I have the top layer selected. I'm going to use my move tool and I'm going to move this right into the middle, right about here. So now I have a uh, looks like a white or a see-through area in the middle of my circle. If I don't like the shape of that, it's a little bit off, I can also go to Edit, Free Transform. And what I can do then is I can just make small adjustments. I want this to be a little bit more of a circle and less of an oval. So all I did is I just dragged that, one of the toggle areas. You can twist things and move them in this uh, window. When you're done, you just click and it says, do you want this? Do you want to apply it? I'm going to yet say yes because I like it. And there we go. So now I have my two shapes on top of each other. I'm going to repeat this step again. Layer, new layer. Now I have the third layer. This time I'm going to do a, another shape, but I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to do a rectangle. So I choose rectangle. I'm leaving all this the same. I don't want a border. I'm going to go back to zero. I'm going to choose a color. This time I'm going to go to blue. Let's go over here. This is my blue. Say yes. And I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to have it go right across the middle like this. Okay, I'm done. I like it. It's right where I want it actually, so that's fine. I could move it maybe a little bit over here. How's that? Okay, and then my last step is to add text. When I've decided I'm done with all my shapes, my last step is to add text. So I'm going to go to the text tool. Now the text tool, when you click that, automatically creates its own layer so you don't have to create a new layer when you're adding a text or type tool. So I'm going to select that, type tool, and then um, I'm going to go to the area I want to type in, although I might have to move it. It might not be exactly where I want it. So this is automatically given me, if I check, it automatically gave me a new layer for text only. So right here I'm going to type in whatever word I want to use or your, your name. If you're doing your name, I'm going to use this. I'm copying the logo I found. And I'm typing in the word underground. Now I want to change the text color and the font and the size and all that. So I can play around with the different fonts and decide which one I like. Any of these. You can take a, take your time. Find one that you like. I kind of like that one. So I'm going to go with this. I'm going to change the color actually to white instead of black. You can do any color you want, but I want to do white because I'm doing a real simple design. And then if I wanted to, I could change the size. Bigger, too big, smaller, too small. This is probably good right in here. Right about there. I'm going to say OK can change the style if I want. Now I don't, it's not exactly centered so I'm on my own uh, layer with the text. I can go to the move tool and just move the text around to where I like it. Right about there is good. And I like it. I'm done. So my last step will be to save it. Now if I'm in the middle of working and I have to stop but I want to leave all my layers separated over here because I'm not completely done. What I'll do is I'll save this in the format of PXD, which is a layered image. This is similar to Photoshop PSD. If you save in this format, you're saving a very large file, but what you're saving is the ability to go back and switch all the, uh, mess with all the layers. That means you're not done. So this is a working draft. I highly suggest that you save this, even if you think you're done. Save it in the working draft. Push OK. 
and it's going to ask you where do you want to put it. I'm going to put it on my desktop actually. So I'll find it. Now to turn it in to your teacher, I'm going to save it again, but this time I will save it in a different format, a smaller format that will compress all the layers. When you save this in either JPEG or PNG, you can choose which of these you want. JPEG is a small file, I'll use that. What it does is it automatically saves it and compresses all the layers, so you can't edit it anymore. It's a final version which is good to turn in because it's smaller. It's a really small image you can see right here. So I'm going to push OK. Put it on my desktop. Now that's saving as a JPEG. That's the one that I will turn into my teacher. And you are done.